Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by fellow licensed massage therapist, Beth Peterson from South Dakota, who joins me as part of my ongoing series to interview a fellow massage therapist from all 50 states. Beth, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And you're there in South Dakota. What city do you live in? Yeah, so I live in Sioux Falls, um, South Dakota. So it's the biggest city in uh, in South Dakota. Um, probably not saying much from where you're from, but yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm from I'm from rural Ohio originally, so oh, okay. I'm sure it's not so bad. And your practice well, there is Unwind Body Work, where you specialize correct. in Thai massage. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, that's all I do is Thai massage. So. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So before we get to the nuts and bolts of how your state licenses practitioners, if you could give me a little origin story as to how you came to massage therapy, and then maybe what led you onto the Thai massage track. Okay. Um, so I was interested in, well, I actually, I'll backtrack a little bit. I wasn't interested in becoming a massage therapist. I'll just tell you that right from the bat. I wanted to be either a physical therapist or a chiropractor. Um, I had been into, um, a car accident when I was pretty young and, uh, chiropractic and physical therapy really got me back on track as far as migraines and just getting myself, you know, back to normal putting the pieces back together, so to speak. Yeah. So, um, so I really was interested as, like initially in becoming either chiropractor or physical therapist or something to that effect. Um, but I was one of those people who I needed to work my way through college. And so I went to a community college and said, Hey, let me get, you know, something just under my belt just to get me started while I go to medical school. So I went to, um, I'm from Minnesota originally, so I went to St. Paul College and I talked to the administration. I said, hey, you know, how can I get my foot in the door, start here, I really like your campus, how can I end up as a chiropractor or physical therapist eventually? Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, you can either do personal training or you can do the massage therapy program. And I wasn't really interested in personal training because I just don't have that kind of personality to really get people like going. I don't have that kind of... um, just uh, drill it into you kind of personality. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll try massage therapy. I'll, you know, I'll see you, see what it's all about. And I went into the program and as soon as I like started, it was almost just instant love connection for me. It was like, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Fell in love with anatomy. Kinesiology was just like my like shining moment, you know, yeah, right on. so good. And um, so I really just kind of fell in love with the program. And I said, you know, I really don't want to go to medical school because that's a lot of education. That's a lot of debt when it comes to like financial, um, you know, like financial aid and things like that. And I was like, you know, it's really not worth it. I can still help people in a pretty profound way and, um, and make decent money doing it by being a massage therapist. So I just you know, kind of gave up on that dream. And I just said, I'm just going to do this. Um, While I was in school, I had no idea what Thai massage was. And we had a um, a guest speaker come in and kind of just showed us what Thai massage was. And like, that was another instant kind of love connection for me. It was just like, I fell in love with it right away. Um, I really made a connection with it. And um, I just knew instantly that that was the path that I wanted to go down in my career just made sense to me. So um, five years later, I end up um, going to, you know, get some training uh, down in St. Louis um, to really expand my knowledge and time massage, and I've been doing it ever since. So. Oh, cool. That sounds good. Did, had you even had much massage or body work before entering the massage program? I did. You know, I had gotten massages um you know, in, in my adolescence years. So, you know, from the time I was like maybe 14 to, you know, to the time I went to college, I had been getting massages, not frequently, but every once in a while. Cause I, um, I was actually a migraine sufferer. I really like, I struggled a lot with migraines um, early on and I still do from time to time, but I found that massage was one of the things that really helped me kind of cope with it. So, um, both physically and emotionally and things like that. So, um, you know, I was familiar with body work in general, um, but it was kind of just like the 
spa kind of thing, you know, just nothing at all what I do now. But um, it's just really interesting, like how how there are so many different ways and avenues that you can go with massage therapy. Yeah, right on. Uh, okay, thanks for talking about your origin story. So let's transition over to what it takes to become a massage therapist in the state of South Dakota. Sure. Um, so I'm actually a, an instructor um, at the college here, at one of the colleges here in, uh, in Sioux Falls. Um, and so the requirements for the state uh, licensure is 500 hours, um, plus you have to pass the AMBLEX. And then you have to get licensed. So the licensing requirements, I think it's like, you know, your initial fees, um, you know, I think it runs probably around 200 or so, give or take. Um, total for the for the license and the processing fees to get it started and then it's just every two years you have to get your continuing education of eight hours um, every single year you have to renew um, with your fee and everything just how many like, hours was it um, eight hours eight um, hours for, every two years every two years yep that's a pretty low bar yeah 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 so yeah, I would imagine that's pretty easy to accomplish. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's really it's not not hard. Um, last year I had like I think it was like twenty four, like right. easy, you know. Yeah. So you just take the class and it's like here you go, you know. But you know, it it works. Um, we're kind of we have a lot of small small um, rural areas, so a lot of small businesses and things here in South Dakota. So it makes sense to have kind of lower. Um, expectations as far as as hours and things like that just because a lot of us can't really afford to travel um there aren't really a whole lot of options for local um continuing education courses so a lot of us will travel a lot of us have to do them online and things like that so it makes sense um me personally i'm kind of gearing up to potentially offer some continuing education classes um myself so hopefully i'll be able to kind of help out other therapists in the area as well. What's the name of the school you teach at? Uh, it's called Stewart's School. So they do cosmetology, they do aesthetics, and they do massage. Oh, cool. And are you teaching Thai there or something else? Uh, no, I just teach core curriculum there. Oh, okay. So I teach everything, yep. That's cool. Well, so, okay, so that's so pretty straightforward, becoming a massage therapist there. And so as we record this, it is, uh, Thursday, May 21st, It'll probably come out um, in less than a week or so from now. So how did this whole crisis unfold in your state? What, how did that look on your end? Sure. Um, so, you know, it was kind of interesting. We're, we're, South Dakota, we're pretty tucked in, you know, so we're pretty, you know, in the Midwest, um, pretty rural area. So we kind of walked watched it happen on both sides on the east coast and on the west coast um and just kind of watched it kind of come in and it's almost like i don't know it's just weird to to explain but um so it was the middle of march when the schools closed so it was i think march 13th so all the schools my school was impacted as well with the closures um so we had to close the schools um Initially, it was like, oh, I'll close for about a week, and then we'll reassess and things like that. But it just ended up going to the end of the school year. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so because of that, and then you know, we had um, we had like a hot spot because we have a meat processing plant here in town, so we had a hot spot locally, um, and so a lot of places ended up closing. Um, our governor did not mandate any closures for any businesses. Um, or anything like that. So we didn't, as massage therapists, we did not have to close down. Um, a lot of us opted to, um, myself being one of them, I did close down uh, temporarily uh, for about a month and a half. And I just started doing some like remote sessions where I would just visit and co consult with my clients um, via Zoom. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of helped just to keep me relevant and keep things kind of going for the time being. Um, but uh, yeah, I just reopened um, my doors to to um, just healthy clients, and and I'm just being cautious with with who I accept. So if, you know, if you're elderly, if you're immune compromised, I'm asking you not to come in for the time being. But um, beyond that, you know, if, if people are healthy, I have really good clients. I trust them um, to 
be smart and use their best judgment on it. But um, yeah, so I just reopened um, a couple weeks ago. Okay. And um, what have you been seeing? Like you, you must have had clients who were missing you and sort of dealing with their own stress and anxiety. Is that, is that playing out in their, what they're showing physically and how they're coming? Yeah, out? definitely. Um, I have quite a few regulars. I work a lot with, um, with a lot of athletes or a lot of people who are very um, active lifestyles. So uh, I did notice with some of my regulars, it was like, I, cause I hadn't seen them. I normally see them, you know, at least once a month. And I just noticed this like, so much tension um, compared to, um, you know, they're normal when I normally see them once a month. And it's just, it's, it's crazy, you know, and, and just how much the anxiety and lack of body work really leads to a lot of pain and a lot of, you know, problems and things like that. So it really just kind of goes to show is that, um, you know, we are essential in a way uh, for keeping people out of pain and for keeping people um, with a healthy mindset and things like that. Yeah, sort of like long-term wellness, health, essential. In the Correct. short term, I can see why why many states had to, or, or, or in yourself included, why we walked away from for a time. So Correct. Yeah. What, what considerations, I haven't spoken to a Thai therapist about going back to work. Did you have to change things about your space? I would imagine it would be a little harder. Like there's a lot of, a lot of talk in, I, I don't know if I call it normal, but like typical massage, like table work, the stuff that I do, we're thinking about our spaces and getting out porous materials and making sure every surface is like more easily wiped down, like that kind of thing. But in Thai, you work on a mat. Like, I don't know, are there considerations you're, you've had to worry about? I mean, you know, I haven't, there is not a whole lot different that I'm actually able to do. I mean, I change the top sheet every single time. I disinfect everything. Um, but you do that anyway, right? Yeah. You just disinfect after every client, you clean everything out regardless. So it hasn't really, you know, impacted me too much when it comes to that, just because, um, you know, I was already doing all these things. So, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Or, or masked. Or, yeah. I guess the way you work, like it's probably a little easier because your clients are keeping their clothes on and you have fewer Correct. things to consider. Yeah. So, exactly. If you've been watching this unfold and so it's, you know, more, sounds like it's more severe in other parts of the country. And you, as you said, it's sort of like you felt it closing around you and sort of maybe feeling insulated and, and there hadn't, hadn't been as many cases in your state. But do you see the, like the, like a more global perspective change to our industry as a result of all this? Yeah. You know, there's, there's quite a lot. Um, I think, you know, in my, in my area, South Dakota itself has had, I believe it's less than 50 deaths. Um, so we're, we haven't really been impacted as much as some other areas. And I see a lot of, um, I've actually left quite a few of massage therapist groups on Facebook just because it's just too much. Um, there seems to be a lot of anxiety out there, which is justified and understandable um, in our industry. It's just, uh, yeah, it's it's really tough. Everybody's kind of in a really tough position right now and nobody really knows exactly what to do or what's the right thing to do. So um, just as we navigate all of this, I think there's going to be a little bit of chaos, a little bit of uncertainty and just things like that, which is, I think, normal in any kind of situation like that. Yeah. As an educator, what can you say about, do you have any sense of like what the school's going to do differently? Like how are they approaching the getting students back in or are they, are they waiting till the fall or what's going on there? Um, so we're actually reopening um, June and June third or June 2nd is when we're starting to open up the school. Um, they're going to be doing a smaller, so staggering um, the classes mm -hmm. out throughout the week and throughout the day. So uh, the students are going to have to go onto a part-time schedule versus their normal full-time schedules um, to stagger the schedules out yeah. so there are less people at the school at a time additionally everybody's going to be wearing masks everybody is required to wash their hands um as soon as they enter the building and before they leave um <clears throat> masks are going to be I, I just said that masks are going to be essential um and then just disinfecting we'll have um different areas that we're going to be disinfecting in the school throughout 
the day and then at the end of the day we'll um really just do a deep clean disinfection. yeah yeah so that means so you so you kind of have to teach your lessons twice then um no my class size is pretty small so twice. um i really don't yeah so i only have i think five five in my class currently oh I um, so it's a pretty small yeah okay yeah i haven't i haven't gotten to hear about any other schools i should reach out to some and see what's going on there yeah well, that's great well that sounds like south dakota is carrying on and keep an eye on how your reopening goes did you did you, was your sense that like most therapists took a break or half or anything like that i think that um probably about half i i know that some of them um i know some who didn't close but their schedules got really kind of hit hard because right. people ended up being to cancel right. um which makes sense you know so at first when it first kind of happened i said well i'm going to leave it up to my clients um and then about a week of that i had too much anxiety and i felt like i was not being a very good therapist so i decided you know it's just not not right for me to continue working yeah. but um you know now now we have a significantly high rate of recoveries versus um new cases so um we're really kind of seeing that tip into that direction so um yeah and has your community do you see any evidence that you're going to lose therapists from the field over this like are people kind of just sort of washing their hands being like i don't want to i don't want to deal with these new measures that i have to take and it's just too much for me are there people walking away or are people rising to the occasion you know, I I see that a lot um, globally and, and nationally that I'm seeing a lot of people wanting to just kind of step away from the field right now. But honestly, in my community, I'm not seeing it. It mm -hmm. seems like everybody's kind of carrying on and just, um, you know, everybody seems to be kind of on the same page with that. Well, we're going to have to implement new procedures. Maybe we'll have to make some changes and, and do different things. But nobody's like um, ready to hang up the towel yeah. that I've noticed anyway. Okay. Well, Beth Peterson, South Dakota. Thanks so much yeah. for taking the time to chat. And we yeah. can we can chat for a little bit more after this recording, but thanks everyone for listening to the Massage Hodge podcast and we will catch you next time. Yeah.